Yeah, typically I ask how, how anybody used Maple, and uh, most engineers say, yeah, we used it in the first two years, and then we went to MATLAB. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> my job is to stop you from doing that. Um, and in fact, you know, a few years ago, I would have to explain why a computer algebra software company was actually involved in an engineering uh, conference like this. Uh, I don't think I need to do that now. I mean, we've been developing um, many tools and many products for uh, uh, solving engineering tools, uh, so problems, uh, over the last 10 years, and uh, we're certainly be getting a good su uh, success out of that. Um, I'm here today actually to talk about, well, why should you be, th why sh you should care about symbolic computation in the context of engineering simulation. So that's really what the, th the thrust of uh, uh, my, my talk today, um, and then in the context of um, actually developing um, uh, FMI support for our, uh, for our clients. Um, <coughs> so just to give you a little bit of an um, introduction to you know, my group and, the, um, and the, the evolution of MapleSoft as a engineering solutions provider. Um, we've been pr providing tools and expertise for, to help solve tough engineering problems, um, primarily in uh, product design, validation, and optimization. So really answering the question, is my, di is my design going to work? And the other question is, how do I make my design work better using optimization tools? And that's large, built largely off uh, using our um, uh, products to uh, build high fidelity physics-based models for uh, doing simulations, plant models for, uh, uh, for control design. Uh, and really, probably the, the major thrust of this uh, presentation is uh, optimized code, design, uh, code generation for in-the-loop testing. And I'm probably going to be focusing more on the hardware in-the-loop side of things for this uh, presentation, but it, it's, it's, uh, it's valid for any kind of integration of uh, model tools or model uh, code into other people's tools. Um, we have a, a group also involved in um, um, MapleSoft that uh, does a lot of advanced uh, research work. Um, so there's a lot of work going on in model order reduction, primarily for targeting um, model predictive control. Uh, that's not going to be my, my uh, presentation today, but uh, just hold that thought if you're actually involved in that kind of work. So in terms of my world, uh, I deal with uh, professional services that are keyed into um, MapleSim, which is our uh, primary uh, simulation tool. Uh, it's multi-domain, system-level modeling, modeling, it's a cause, it's all the good things that Modelica-based tools bring to, bring to the world. Um, we do have the advantage of having Maple, because we can integrate Maple um, into, our, um, into our models and use that for doing things like parametric studies, analysis, and, and optimization. But the core thing is that we can generate fast code from the, any of the simulations and uh, analyses that we do for implementation further down the stream. And that's really the, 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 uh, what advanced symbolics brings to, uh, to this world. We can do um, um, a lot more with our integrated symbolic uh, technology than many other tools can do, and we've been able to demonstrate that we can get significant advantage by doing that. So what do we mean by advantages? Well, if we take a look at a system diagram in, in MapleSim, uh, first thing is we can formulate the model as a set of equations. So we can actually get system level equations out of the, uh, that a causal representation immediately. Um, fully symbolic, fully parametric. We can then use uh, symbolic techniques. I'm sure those of you who have been expect, uh, exposed to tools like Maple will be f familiar with the simplify command. Well, we're using a variance of that to uh, uh, bring down the number of computations down to the most concise representation, the most numerically efficient for form possible. One of the big area, biggest areas in terms of, um, uh, or biggest challenges of developing solvers for a causal uh, modeling is dealing with differential average algebraic equations. So how do we handle uh, algebraic constraints within the, um, the dynamic system models? So there's a lot of um, work being gone into, into that. There's a lot of research that's gone into that. And we are using our uh, symbolic capabilities, combined with uh, some numeric tools as well, to come down to, to be able to do index reduction very, efficiency, very, very efficiently and with minimal um, uh, errors. The next step is we need to be able to convert this a causal representation into a causal representation. We now need to put this into, a, uh, into an environment where we have inputs and we have outputs. 
Um, and to automate that process, again, is, is, is very challenging. And our uh, uh, tools are used um, extensively to do this. We implement a linear graph theory approach uh, to, to the representation for doing the causal, causalization. And then the final step, which, believe it or not, optimization of uh, C code is a symbolic process. Uh, we can identify uh, common uh, sub-expressions. We can extract those out. We can um, put those to one side. We can compute them into a, um, into a, a temporary variable. So we're not repeatedly uh, performing those cal calculations over and over again. And that gives us, gives us a major advantage in terms of performance. So over the years, we've been developing um, connectors that are being directed at specific uh, products. By far, probably our biggest uh, uh, use, user base is uh, MATLAB Simulink, so we generate S functions. That was our first protocol. Um, but we've now been working with many other uh, tool vendors to provide a, a very easy way of taking the code that's being generated from, um, uh, from MapleSim and bring that into their environment until we discovered FMI. And that actually helped us to um, really talk to our um, partners about well, instead of trying to come up with some kind of uh, dedicated proprietary way of, of implementing the, the code, let's use FMI as the, uh, as the interface. By doing that, you, know, you open yourself up to not just us, but other tools as well. And it actually makes the job much easier for everybody if, um, if they um, apply to the rules. Um, and that's really uh, what, what we've been focusing on, uh, certainly over the last uh, couple of years, is, is developing support for FMI largely because we can um, not only produce very fast code, but it's actually, you can add more detail into the, the model and achieve real-time performance where really other tools have failed. And um, just to really be very explicit about that, the code that we actually generate, the FMUs we generate this from this are royalty-free. You can distrib distribute these and utilize them any number of times with, with any, any, any platforms. So why is this important? Um, well, I think the biggest thing is just to take a look at uh, the, the, the time. You know, there are many reasons why people want very fast code. But where it becomes really critical is in HIL types of applications or real-time applications where you're dealing with uh, typically a time budget of around a, um, a millisecond. And you want to be able to execute what could be a com complex model within that, uh, that time frame. Um, this is. Um, um, a model that we um, did a, a benchmark with against a well-known competitor. Um, and uh, what we could see, and this actually came from a, a client, uh, they were starting to approach that, that threshold where it was starting to become untenable um, to use uh, the code that was generated from this tool within their uh, HIL platform. We took the same model and we were able to run this at a tenth of the, um, the, the time step. Um, this is great, um, and it also means that we can uh, uh, that our client can actually add, add more detail into that headroom uh, within that, uh, that that time slice. So this is something we've been able to demonstrate over and over again. Obviously, I will admit this is probably our best case scenario, but typically we're around about double the speed uh, when we actually look at any kind of um, um, applications that come our way. In terms of the the, the workflow. Uh, for the FMI, I'll just sort of take you, step you through as normally I would do a demo, but I don't have the time to do that, so uh, I'll just step you through this. So this is not, uh, the idea here is that you have a fairly complex mechanism, a, a double wishbone um, suspension mechanism. This has a certain kinematic response. You want to be able to implement that kin kinematic response within um, a, another tool. So we can take that model, um, open up Maple, and then with a couple of clicks of a button, actually um, select the, um, the, the various options for FMI, whether it's um, co-simulation, you know, build in the, the, the solver, or a model exchange, you just use the target um, solver to do that, and then generate the code from that, and then simply implement it in your tool. And it's, it is as easy as that, and um, we've been now working with um, uh, several uh, partners and, and, and customers to um, uh, demonstrate how this approach is, is pain-free. It's, uh, it's, it's very smooth and, uh, and, and pain-free. Um, so before I get into some of the uh, example case studies, uh, let me just talk about um, where we are today with FMI, uh, what our plans are for, uh, certainly for the near future. 
I should say that a lot of our support, and in fact, pretty much in anything that we do inside our products, are client-driven. So they are project-driven. We, we get engaged in a project, and that helps us to define the requirements. We have a ready customer to test this, and we can uh, get this to implemented in an appropriate way. So with uh, today, we, we support FMI uh, 1. And we currently have uh, beta 4 um, for, for export, and export only really at this stage. Largely just be because of the workflow. Typically, people are using MapleSim to develop their plant model or their system model and then bring that into another tool. We are starting to get re requests to take um, uh, models from other tools and then bring those back into um, the MapleSim environment. And we expect to at least have a first step in this um, uh, in, the, in the first, well, sometime next year. This was, um, I was actually told by my developers, don't say Q2, say Q3. So, <laughs> so, um, <coughs> so this, this is the, the state we're at at the moment. Um, we do have a th another, um, I think, a pretty exciting um, uh, development that, that we're working on. And, uh, and that is, um, I don't know if uh, you're familiar with the, uh, the new DSpace Galexio framework. But this really is a, um, a much more open approach to impl implementing um, uh, codes from many different tools. And, part, and a core part of their strategy is to uh, import or to, to be able to handle FMUs from many different vendors. So we've been working with them very closely. Um, and we're actually now at a point where we're actually looking for uh, pilot um, uh, testers to see how this will work within a real environment. So I'm putting the call out now. If anybody is interested in, uh, in, in doing a pilot test we're between ourselves and DSpace, please let me know. So um, first case study I want to talk about, this is actually the very first one that we, um, we got involved with, with, with FMI. We'd actually been developing uh, our own um, sort of proprietary or uh, inter interface or the code that just f um, integrated into AIMSIM. Because um, what they wanted to do is to take um, the, uh, the uh, multi-body model uh, or implement a multi-body model with the hydraulic circuits that they have, uh, that they had developed. So they were using just um, sort of um, loading signals. Now they wanted to see how those loads were actually um, apparent in a real um, um, multi-body mechanism. Um, we started with uh, just uh, doing our, our own uh, generic code generation and then developing an interface that, uh, uh, that went into uh, AIMSIM. That worked pretty well. We got um, some pretty good response for that. Um, and then uh, along came FMI. And we thought, well, let's give this a try with, with FMI. So essentially, our customer became our guinea pig with this. Of course, it was an unmitigated disaster. It, um, it was, uh, um, you know, we had many, many uh, issues with it. It was very slow. We learned a lot, a lot of lessons, a lot of iterations between the uh, uh, client and ourselves to the point now where there is actually very little overhead between the, um, uh, the, 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 our generic interface and the use, uh, the use of um, uh, FMI. I'm told five minutes, so I'm going to skip very quickly through um, uh, the next case study, this is, um, involves um, VI Grade and uh, Concurrent, uh, who are the supplier for um, uh, the real-time platform for doing uh, uh, driving simulators. Um, we developed a, a dedicated um, code export to or connector to uh, VI Grade or VI Car Real-Time. But um, Concurrent actually approached us and said, well, you know, could we actually try doing this with FMI? So they developed an FMI interface. We sent them a model. Um, this is the, the, the model that uh, we, we implemented. It's an HEV system, very complex um, uh, model. A week later, they said, would you like some benchmarks? So it actually just went straight in. There was no issues. There was no back and forth between uh, our, our developers and their developers. And we were very able to implement something very, very quickly within, um, uh, within the, uh, the, the, their uh, concurrent in, in interface. And that's now being used. With the, within the uh, VI grade or VI car real time as part of their drive, driving simulator. Um, since I don't have much time left, I'll just wrap up. And, uh, um, we did um, develop a, um, a proof of concept for a, um, an OEM in, 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 in Europe with, with Qtronic for doing testing for ISO, ISO 
26262. And again, we just sent them the models, they implemented them. It, uh, it just worked. So with that, I'll, uh, I'll wrap up and um, just summarize by saying that uh, you know, we are deeply invested in, in the FMI. We do see this as the f future for, uh, um, for integration of many different models from many different tools. And as we have seen, it's actually very easy. Once you get it into implemented, it's actually very easy to get uh, it, uh, systems integrated. The symbolic technology that we use is at the core of all this. We can produce very fast code uh, in order to, to implement um, these models within the FMI environment. And uh, you forgive the, uh, the, the marketing at the end. Uh, you know, we are available to, to talk about uh, any kinds of projects uh, that um, would help you, uh, that we can help you to reduce development time and produce better products and get to market faster. With that, thank you.